Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. It's now time for the feature sound of the evening. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! Something that comes along every now and then in generation, and it's special, and it's no hype. I'm telling you, it's special. No respect to this guy. Let's go. Now he's got the fire on his side. You better believe it. Now that was something special. Get him up, get him in. Twenty rounds, twenty victories. It is over. A professional record, a perfect one. Remember, got to the body. Great finish from a great finish. It was Lamb versus Lamb. And still, the undisputed champion of the world. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Todd Grisham, alongside, of course, Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Boxing. We are in beautiful Fresno, California. The weather cooperated, did it not? Oh, amazing. I mean, especially for us Brits. You brought your sunglasses, and uh, we're very lucky to be here, as I just said to, to a couple of fighters. What a time to be alive. Look at this beautiful blue skies. We have a big crowd here in Fresno on Saturday. The return of Mikey Garcia on DAZN. So many great fights. World Championship action as well. A couple of new signings to announce as well. Great time to be alive, Todd, and you're looking unbelievable. This is the first time that uh, you've dressed nicer than me. You're usually wearing in a jersey, shorts, a lot of pasty white legs showing. What's going on with well, you? Ever since you become a major celebrity, you've you've turned up the switch. <laughs> but uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll change that on Saturday. Can't wait for the action. Well, we're here at Chachansey Park. We're expecting a full house. I believe what over 8,000 tickets sold. Incredible. What does uh, Fresno love about boxing so much? We've seen some some great fights here. A lot of fans show up. They absolutely love the sweet science. Yeah, and we should also give thanks to Rick Mirrigan down here as well, who's uh, mainly the reason that we're here. I've been here a couple of times for fights, very passionate fan base. Of course, you know, a lot of uh, Mexican-Americans as well, and, and Mikey Garcia, one of the biggest stars in that respect in boxing as well. They know their boxing here. They appreciate great action. You have a great open-air facility as well here with the sun's going to be shining on. So this is a great place to come, and, and I think it's important to, to make sure that we visit these kind of areas as well. We've got your traditional New Yorks and Las Vegas, and, and L.A. as well, but great to come for a fight night in Fresno, and the fans are going to create a great atmosphere on Saturday. And the fans are getting to see one of the best pound-for-pound uh, -pound fighters in the world, Mikey Garcia. He faces a fighter that we don't know too much about, but we should learn about this guy. He's capable of pulling off an upset out of Spain, Sander Martin. What do you know about him? I know a lot about him. You know, he's part of the, the matchroom roster as well in, in Spain. He's headlined a number of events um, on our, our big Spanish shows live on zone as well. And when you looked at the opponent options for Mikey Garcia, you know, you've got a guy in Mikey Garcia that's been inactive for around 18 months. Great victory last time out against Jesse Vargas. That came just before the pandemic. He's been on the sidelines. Sandor Martin's been nice and active. He's been defending his European Championship. He's top 15 in the world right now. But I chose Sandor Martin because... I knew he'd come to win. And this is the opportunity of a lifetime for him and his father and his family. And I want someone that's going to test Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is, is a pound-for-pound pound great. He's a four-division world champion. But if you're going to give him a fight that he might think is there to sort of dust the rust off, put him in with someone that has the opportunity to change his life. Put him in with someone that will do everything he can to take this opportunity with both hands. Sandor Martin is here to win. He has a massive task ahead of him on Saturday, but I promise you he will give it everything on Saturday night. And that's what you want. And what are you setting this fight up for? If Mikey Garcia wins as he is expected to, if he wins this fight on Saturday, What's next for him? Well, I think everybody talks about the Regis Progre fight. Of course, that's a, a great fight that has a lot of potential as well. The fact is, is that Mikey's been out of the ring for, for 19 months. And that's a long time for a fighter. We've seen that a lot coming out of the pandemic. We've seen fighters struggle to deal with that inactivity as well. So, again, I think this is a lot more dangerous than just to, you know, dust the rust off, as I said. This is going to be a competitive fight from a guy that's coming to win. But if Mikey is the fighter that he's perceived to be, we expect him to, to put a dominant performance on and move forward. Forward, and I believe the Regis Pro Grey fight is a fight that should happen in the early 2022 calendar. In the rest of the card, what's the one fight that you think could steal the show? Does it involve Edwin Soto, perhaps? Always, always. You know, these these smaller guys are just giving us tremendous fights. I mean, you remember the fight with uh, 
Soto on the last Canelo Billy Joe Saunders card. It was a back and forth affair. This is a really tough fight for him against Gonzalez. It's the mandatory challenger for the WBO title. It's a very tough fight. That will be an all action fight. Look out for Jesse Bam Rodriguez as well. This is a guy that Mikey Garcia and Robert Garcia have spoken so fondly about. Um, and of course, as well, Brock Jarvis, our Australian star, coming here to make his matchroom debut as well. This kid's got everything really, really exciting. Diego Pacheco and of course, Mark Castro. I was going to ask you about him next. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, what an opportunity for Mark Castro, you know, from Fresno, gets a chance to fight here in front of his home crowd. He's looked great so far. He's still at the early stages of his professional development, but what an opportunity for him to fight in his home crowd, and he's going to get a great reception. And what do you feel right now about the state of boxing after that amazing fight we saw last week with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder? The sport is buzzing right now. It's, it's all over social media. People are clamoring for more boxing. Of course, you've got Dillian White and Otto Walla next week, this fight card as well. What do you feel about the state of boxing right now? I think it's in a good place. You know, everyone always likes to champion the boxing is dead mantra. Couldn't be further from the truth. It's a load of rubbish. You know, last week was such a great week for, he for heavyweight boxing, but for boxing in general. You know, a fight of the year contender between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. But it, it captivated the audience. It got the casual fans interested in the sport we love. And there's so much more to come from the sport of boxing outside of the heavyweight division. But that is always the trophy, isn't it, of, of the, the sport. And if the heavyweight division is thriving, the rest of the sport will follow. Joshua against Usyk, tremendous occasion between two brilliant heavyweights. Didn't go our way. Like you said, Otto Wilden against Dillian White in a couple of weeks. Tremendous fight as well. Um, and right now, so many great fights to be made. Of course, when we look at the closing schedule of the year, we not only have the World Championship quadruple header with Demetrius Andre, but you have the small matter of Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, and Tiafimo against George Cambosos all coming to the zone, probably in the space of three weeks. So a huge end to the year. But we must make sure we see those guys fighting each other in the early part of 2022. Yeah, well, I got you up here on the hot seat. Let's talk about it. Who do you think Devin Haney is going to fight next? And when is that Tiafimo Lopez fight with Cambosis going to happen and where? Well, I think, um, you know, the reports are that Ryan Garcia... The reports? You're the fight. man. Yeah, well, I don't, you know, it's, that's a Golden Boy show. I don't want to upset them. Okay. But, you know, Jojo Diaz looks like he'll fight uh, Ryan Garcia, which was very disappointing to Devin Haney because he was the mandatory challenger for that fight. But that's OK. Devin Haney, you know, we talked to Richard Comey, made them a huge offer. They're not queuing up to fight Devin Haney. You've got Maxi Hughes, IBO world champion from the UK on a great run as well. And then you've got the week after, could well be Tiafimo against George Cambosas. So there'll be three really good lightweight fights. To make the mega fights, those guys have got to face each other as well. But to get those three princes, I think we'll call them, not kings just yet, that's a, that's a big word, but to see those three close out the year in successive weeks on the zone is, is a, a big moment for the platform. And before we move on, I want to ask you about your card in two weeks, October 30th, the main event, Dillian White versus Otto Wallen, the number one contender position. So technically, hypothetically, the winner would face Tyson Fury. What are your thoughts on that matchup? Well, Dillian White's ready to, to face the, the winner of the weekend, which was Tyson Fury. So that fight should be called. But Otto Wallen is a very, very tough test. You see him nearly beat Tyson Fury. You know, a, ho a horrible cut come through in that fight probably should have got stopped. And it's another big banana skin for Dillian White on that card as well. Mary McGee, uh, unified against Chantel Cameron, the WBC champion, Ring Magazine championship on the line. Big card from the O2 and a really important fight for the heavyweight division. Dillian White continues to take on all comers. He must get his shot at Tyson Fury and we'll be really campaigning for that. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from the man himself, Eddie Hearn. And now for a few minutes, we'll take a quick break and be back and we'll be introduced to the latest signing for Matchroom Boxing. <laughs> I look good, huh? You look great. 
and welcome back, Eddie Hearn, Todd Grisham, and a man who just asked you, do I look good? What do you think, Eddie? <laughs> I think he looks great. You know, um, it gives us great pleasure, Todd, to, to welcome Montana Love to the Matchroom team, the DAZN platform as well. I watched this young man fight on the Jake Paul card um, on Showtime pay-per-view, and I just thought, wow, what a star. And when I got in touch and I heard the amazing news that he hadn't had a promotional deal. <laughs> we were just all over it. it like, yeah, I mean, this kid can fight. He looks good. He's got unbelievable personality. He's willing to fight all these guys. He's come up on the rough side without being gifted anything. He's ready to jump in. This is a massive star at 140 pound division. And you're going to see this guy shine this year, in fact, live on the zone. So take us back when you got the phone call. Matchroom, Eddie Hearn wants to talk to you. What was your reaction? Uh, honestly, uh, I felt like it was a dream come true. You know, um, honestly, I've been reaching out to Eddie in a team for about quite some time. So to have it come now, it was is a beautiful thing. And for those who have never seen you fight before, how would you describe your style? Amazing. You know, <laughs> uh, I feel like um, I got everything. I can box. I can bang. Uh, I pretty much showed showed it all in my last fight. You know, out of, out of face adversity, I got hit with very big shots. You know, I take nothing from Ivan. He was a, a, a hell of a fighter, great fighter. And Ivan Baranchuk, who yeah, you fought in Cleveland, right? Yeah, yeah, Ivan Baranchuk. He's a hell of a he's a strong guy. You know, and it, it showed a lot that fight. It showed a lot about me. And yeah, I'm, to sum it up, I'm an amazing fighter. So at 140 pounds. Who do you see on the landscape? Who are we going to see Montana Love chasing? Um, right now with the team, after talking to the team, you know, we gonna we rather take it, you know, step at a time. But the fight that I really do like is uh, what's the kid name? Um, he's getting ready to fight Vargas. I like uh. Zapata. I like that Zapata fight. Um, and then, you know, from after the Zapata fight, we definitely looked at, you know, do a, a, a um, Josh Taylor or Javante or whoever else, you know, Eddie has in front of me. What say you, Eddie? Who do you see this yeah, guy? I mean, I think that he's almost a little bit of a hidden secret before the last fight against Barancic. What a fight. I mean, you know, he was right in the deep end in that fight. You saw Barancic in a fight of the year with Zapata, which was back and forward. You saw him in a good fight with Josh Taylor as well. He stepped up to the plate. That was another, you know, great fight with Barancic. Got buzzed in that fight, had to come back and, and laid him out as well in front of his own people in Cleveland as well, which is an important market for us. You know, I think you look at that fight with Jake Paul, you look at the subscriber base of the zone, we see a huge amount of boxing fans in Cleveland. And I, I see this man headlining there next year for sure. For now, he's either going to box on the Devin Haney card or the Tiafimo Lopez card at, at the uh, beginning of December. He's going to get a chance to shine, keep learning, keep improving keep pushing that profile and next year I see him in with all those guys at 140 you know you've got Mikey Garcia here on this card he's another guy that could be a huge fight Devin Haney's going to move up to 140 at some point as well Javonte Davis against Do you imagine Javonte Davis against Montana Love in Cleveland massive. I mean this is a massive massive fight this guy will take on all comers but we'll do it at the right pace as well he still needs to learn his trade he still needs to go through those tough fights and we want to build him to superstar status when you've got someone that's got the personality and ability of Montana Love, do you know what, Todd? I don't even have to be any good because I've got it right in front of me. You know, I don't have to lie to you. I don't even have to try and get him to talk more or, you know, dress up in brighter clothes. It's right there in front of you. The, the young man's got it all, and he can really fight. And, you know, his own subscribers are going to really enjoy watching this young man's development. Well, you got the bling. Tell us about this. Love hurts. How many diamonds are in that thing? Uh, that I can't tell you. I know this is worth uh, the chain and everything. I got the paperwork, got insurance on. It's worth sixty-seven thousand. Um, got you know, I got insurance on my piece and everything. But you know, the love hurts. It just you know, it represents a lot about me. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of things I'd have been through. You know, and like the first woman I ever fell in love with, which was my mother. She passed away. She left me. You know, so love hurts, man. In so many different ways, it just speaks a lot to me. You know. Who's your favorite fighter when you look uh, around boxing right now? Who's the one guy that really impresses you the most? Right now, my favorite fighter, Canelo. Canelo, he, he's just a well-rounded fighter. You know, um, even when he's getting pressed through everything, the, the, what I learned about Canelo is just staying calm. And, you know, that's, that's my biggest thing, and that's just the biggest thing in life, period, is just stay calm through any situation, stay relaxed, stay, you know what I mean, stay sane. And Canelo shows it all, man. He's, he's an amazing fighter. All right, so give us a prediction. What's going to happen? Mikey Garcia, Santa Martin, Saturday night here in Fresno. 
Um, honestly, I don't know Sanio Martin, but you know, from me knowing and watching Mikey, uh, I think Mikey went by knockout. There you have it, Eddie. What's the future for this guy? How how big and bad can he be? Well, the future, you know, when you when you're with us and with the zone, is really down to your own ability. You will get every opportunity to progress. You will get every opportunity to shine in big fights as well, and he can do it. You know. American boxing is crying out for superstars, crying out for guys with big personalities that can really fight as well. And, you know, as I said, coming from Cleveland, putting in a performance like that in Cleveland on a card like that, we're very honored to get this young man's signature, and we look forward to a huge future with him. Yeah, and what was it like growing up being a boxer in Cleveland? Give us your background story. How did you get into fighting? Uh, I started boxing when I was five years old. Uh, me and my brothers and them, we used to fight in the house all the time. Uh, my father died when I was three, so my mother, you know, she a single woman. She can't really teach a man how to be a man. So in certain areas, in certain aspects, she just put us in sports to try to learn from other, you know, from other, being around other, you know, good men. So, um... I had my first fight. I was in the gym. I was a gym rat for three years. Had my first fight at eight. Uh, I won my first belt in Kansas City at ringside at eight years old, and that right there just made me fall in love with it, you know. But you know, don't get me wrong. At times, growing up, it's it's hard to stay focused in the gym because all your friends they playing basketball, they playing football. They don't understand this grind. You know what I mean? For the boxing, it's just a one man sport, a lonely sport. It's the hurt business, you know. And you know, at times it's definitely you know hard to stay focused. But you know, as I got older and been through my process, you know, as far as going to prison and everything, and, you know, it just, it was just time to buckle down and take it serious, and I'm here now, you know. All right, well, we'll give you the last word. What would you like to say to your family and friends watching right now? What's the Hurt Business going to be like on DAZN? Uh, we're going to make it the pretty business, you know, uh, too pretty. We're going to put on the show. We're going to get the fans a lot to watch. Uh, we're going to be very exciting. And I might be having a conversation with y'all in the middle of the fight. I don't know, man. <laughs> so get y'all tickets. Anytime I fight, it's going to be a show. I appreciate you guys. Continue to watch me, support me. I fight for you. Awesome. Can I wear that uh, Saturday night during the fight? Yeah, you can have whatever you like. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back as we count down the press conference here in Fresno. We're in these orchards, uh, almond orchards, outside of Fresno and uh, Central Valley. The gentleman brought us to his uh, almond orchards to show us the impact of, of the, the, the lack of water to, to, the, to the fields here. Water allocation has been you know, continuously over the years uh, allocated elsewhere in different areas and then they're being impacted you know, severely. And you can see the, the devastation, you know, no water, you know, crops can't grow. They have to pull the trees because they're, they're, they're dying, they're dead. And it's not just the farm owner that gets impacted. When you look at all the families that work at the farm that now have no job. They were telling me that uh, Mendota has, a, has had up to, I think, 40% unemployment rate. Unemployment, uh, it, it's... it's, it's like nowhere else. I'm Joe Del Bosque. I'm a farmer out here on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley. Agriculture here uh, is very important to the nation because we do grow so much food. That there, you know, there's a lot of jobs here. We have hundreds of thousands of farm workers here in the valley that work in agriculture. But when we don't have water, we don't have the jobs. We don't have the crops. We don't have the food. And and that affects the whole country. Yeah, I'm Mario Santoyo. I'm a water resources engineer, but formerly a farm worker like many of the people that live in this valley. And so I also represent the California Latino Water Coalition, who has tried to be a voice for Latinos and farm workers who get impacted by the lack of water, which translates into uh, the loss of their jobs. And so uh, we try to make a difference legislatively uh, so as to change some of the legislation that prohibits water from making it to the valley. Well, the first thing to do is, is to raise awareness on, on the matter, on the issue, you know, the importance of water, how, how there needs to be, you know, it needs to be, the legislation needs to be written and, and, and helping the, the, the farmers here. Just showing awareness is, is important, but you know, what's the next step? 
and that next step is you know getting a hold of, of, of these uh, you know um, political you know campaigns and then try to get uh, just you know get get the right people in, informed. Well, you saw that piece. He was in it, and here he is, stage left, ladies and gentlemen, Mario Santono of the uh, Santoyo of the California Latino Water Coalition, and Jerry Dyer, the mayor of Fresno. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Uh, we saw Mikey there basically saying, "Reach out uh, to your local politicians, get, get more awareness for this problem." Um, what can people do specifically? What bills can people support? What things can they do legislatively that you guys are behind to help solve that crisis? Well, right now, there, there's going to be an initiative uh, in California that's going to allow for funding uh, for additional water resources infrastructure, so that's going to be important. But more importantly is that there are some current efforts being made in Washington, D.C. to change the level of water that comes from Northern California into the Central Valley, and we've got to have people send uh, letters to their congressmen telling them to be very focused and make sure that we get treated fairly. How long has this been a problem? Is this something that's popped up recently with droughts? Has it been climate change related or has this been something you've been dealing with for decades? Actually, it's really not so much uh, climate change. It has more to do with basically the changes in the regulations on how water is utilized in California. And it, and it all started in 1991 when there uh, was big chunks of our water supply that was re rededicated uh, to uh, the environmental uh, community. And ever since then, more and more has been shifted in that direction. And I'm not saying anything bad about the environment. What I'm saying is, is that when these big decisions are being made by, whether it's Washington, D.C. or Sacramento, they have to try to do it in a balanced way to make sure that the people, Central Valley, California in general, get treated equally when they make those decisions. Because it doesn't make any sense to shift water and put thousands of people to the unemployment lines. And Mayor Dyer, I know you're in the city of Fresno, but you're very familiar with this issue as well. What things uh, have you seen done lately, and what things can people do to help solve this crisis? Well, it's not just an issue for farmers. Uh, certainly, we uh, we feed the world here in the valley, uh, but this is about having good drinking water uh, within our rural areas. Uh, it also applies to all of our urban areas. The simple fact is, as Mario was saying, is 80% of the water in California is north of the Delta, 80% of the need is south of the Delta. And so when you have the demand, 80% of the demand south of the Delta, and we're not the ones able to access that water, we got a serious issue. And when you add the drought on top of that, it makes it even worse. And so not only do we have difficulty uh, providing water for our farmers to be able to grow food uh, to distribute throughout the, the world, but uh, now we're, we're struggling with good drinking water. So it is a serious issue, uh, not just drought related, not just related to the, to the climate. Uh, simple fact is we need water south of the Delta. And last question on this, uh, it's nice to have Mikey Garcia as a good spokesperson. He, he really, uh, the way this has affected his family, um, extended family, they were all working on farms when he was younger. It's nice to have someone like that as the face of, of this crisis, is it not? First of all, we're really grateful for him to have the interest and uh, the eagerness to want to help uh, because he, his brother, Robert, uh, and his dad uh, all worked in the field, much like the majority of the, re the people that live here in the Central Valley, including myself. All farm workers at some point, we, we know the struggle. Uh, and, and going back to this water shortage is that the first people to be impacted when there is water shortage is the farm workers. Right. They're the first ones to get laid off, and, and they're the least that can afford it, okay? And so that, that's why the, our organization has tried to, uh, to raise the attention to that, because you, you can't have that kind of impact and think that farm workers are basically uh, acceptable collateral damage. They're not. They're, they're humans, and, and they need a voice, and that's what we try to do.
Well, thanks for all you've done for this cause, and I appreciate you joining us. And Mayor Dyer, I was going to ask you quickly before I know you have something special for Eddie Hearn. Just talk to us about boxing and Fresno. Why does this community love the sweet science so much? We love we love boxing in Fresno. We have a history of boxing here. Uh, as you know, we've raised some of the greatest boxers in, in the world uh, right here in, in Fresno. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to promote uh, Fresno. We want this to be the entertainment hub of Central California. And uh, certainly when Eddie Hearn chooses this venue right here at Chichancy Park to have a, uh, a fight like this, uh, it's, it's good for Fresno, it's good for the Valley. And, uh, and you know, we're going to get behind it. You're going to see this place rocking and rolling on Saturday night uh, when uh, our fighters uh, step into the ring. You got uh, Mark Castro from Fresno. We, we got Mark Castro, uh, homegrown. Uh, graduated from uh, Sunnyside High School. He's 3-0, and three uh, knockouts. And Mark, uh, more than that, he's a great mentor to our, uh, to our kids here in Fresno. And uh, he's, a, he's a man of God. He's somebody that I uh, really respect. Had him in my office here a couple of weeks ago. And I tell you what, he represents boxing very, very well in a very professional manner. And uh, he's somebody that our, our kids can look up to. And here in the downtown area, have you turned to boxing or seen uh, people here trying to get boxing grassroots area to get some of the, the poor youth in this area focused off the streets, dialed in? It's such a great sport in that regard, is it not? Yeah, you know, I, I spent uh, 40 years in the police department, uh, last 18 as a police chief before being the mayor. And uh, we had our Police Activities League, which is a huge boxing program. And we would bring uh, kids in from the inner city uh, every single day. Um, uh, one of my retired officers, Pete Santiano, mentored these kids. We'd have 50 or 60 of these kids uh, in the gym every single day. Uh, some of these kids uh, grew up in, in families where they had gang members there, uh, individuals who were flunking out of school, got into this boxing program, and I tell you, today they're excelling. Some of those, the Cedro Ochoa, is now boxing professionally, and a number of others. So we're very, uh, we're, we're very much supportive of boxing, what that does for our youth, what that does for our valley, uh, the discipline that it instills in our youth. And so uh, anytime we bring something like this here to Fresno, uh, I think it serves as, uh, you know, somewhat of a dream for these youth to be able to attend. So we look forward to Saturday. And we are all excited about Saturday. And before we go, I know you have something you'd like to say or give to Eddie Hearn. And it's a good thing. Some people want to give Eddie Hearn a bad thing, like a punch <laughs> in the mouth. But it's you not know that. what? Not, nothing but good here in Fresno for Eddie Hearn because Eddie, uh, Eddie chose Fresno to host this, uh, this venue site. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very, very uh, fortunate that he did because I know there's a lot of other cities uh, that, that could have had this, uh, this uh, fight on Saturday. Uh, but Eddie chose Fresno. And so uh, today, as a mayor of Fresno, I want to take this opportunity to, to recognize you. I know back in 2018 you, you uh, signed boxing's first billion-dollar deal. Uh, 20 months ago, you signed uh, Fresno's own Mark Castro uh, to be under your tutelage, and we're very much appreciative of that. But uh, as a mayor, I'm very appreciative of the fact that you chose not only Fresno, but downtown Fresno, right here at Chichancy Park, to be able to host this boxing match on Saturday. And I know it's going to be a, a huge crowd. And so I tell you what, uh, what we're doing today, I'm not going to uh, read all the whereas is in there for, Eddie, uh, but I will say this. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Jerry Dyer, do hereby proclaim Thursday, October 14th, 2021, to be Matchroom Boxing and Eddie Hearn Day in the city of Fresno. So, Eddie, wow. welcome right. to Fresno. Wow, thank you very much. I never thought I'd get that. That's made me very happy. Huh? Thank you for it all may, your support. It may be the only day you get, but you got one in Fresno. <laughs> yeah, it will definitely be the and, only and day. And any time you want to come back to Fresno to bring boxing, our doors are wide open. I promise you we'll... Uh, We'll roll out the red carpet. There'll be no red tape. I really appreciate that, and thank you to Rick as well for your support. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. We hope we give the city a fantastic night on Saturday. All right. Well, you will. And Rick Merigian, thank you for all you've done to promote boxing here in Fresno and, uh, all, and making Fresno an entertainment venue for the entire nation. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor. And now we get set to start our press conference as we count down the hours to Garcia versus Martin live on DAZN. <laughs> I'd like to thank you. Yeah. 
Well, welcome back, and uh, thank you to Todd Grisham and, and our various guests as we start the main press conference for Saturday night's huge night of World Championship Boxing here in Fresno, live across the world on the zone. And before we talk about the championship fights and before we talk about the main event as well, I'm delighted to be joined by three incredible, incredible talents up here on the stage so many fighters at different stages in their career i guess when i talk about prospects the two men to my immediate right and left we can't really talk about prospects anymore because you're ready to start taking the big challenge down on my far left khalil ko who is more of that prospect stage right now but what a group of talent we have up here khalil i'll start with you um brilliant last time out on the devin haney card it's taken a little bit of time to come back while we were waiting to confirm our schedule, but you're here, October 16th, Fresno, ready to make another statement. Most definitely, you know, um, I'm just looking to build off of the next fight, you know, and get better. And, and I'm here with a former teammate, another friend, and we, we're going to put on a show. Everybody knows about you. You set up, and obviously you, you're former teammates as well, but not many people know outside of that. And I feel like your last fight, people just took up and stood, no, stood notice. I know it was a routine victory for you, but did you feel that people and the feedback that you received from your last fight really showed that people are excited about the journey of Khalil Ko? Most definitely, you know, the, uh, the outcome was bigger than I expected. You know, even when I, when, once I fought, the people who were yelling my name, I know I had my own section, but there were, there were a lot of other people that I didn't know that came and support me, and, and, and it, felt, it felt amazing. I know you're a few steps behind these guys as well, but you do have the ambitions to move quite quickly in a division. 175 pound, going to be your focus. Great division right now. And I think when you look at the fighters coming through and those prospects, you're really well placed. You've got a lot of those fighters, Better Biev, Joe Smith, you know, coming towards the end of the tenure, Dimitri Bivol as well. But it's wide open, that division, over the next sort of 12, 18 months to really start making your stamp. Most definitely, you know, um, I'm here to make a statement on Saturday, you know, so they can recognize and, and see, see I'm coming. Well, I'm delighted to welcome back Nikita Ababi. Nikita, it's been a while. Um, firstly, how does it feel to be back? Where are you at? Your mind right now? You had that break. We felt like you needed that break. You came out the blocks real fast as a pro. Almost the wildness of that might have taken over. You've had a time just to step back, reassess your goals, and looking at you in training, you look absolutely ready to go on Saturday night. Yeah, I feel I feel amazing. I feel like I've never left. I'm back like I never left. Um, you know, a little, little, you know, I have to take care of a little things. You know, mental stuff. You know, family stuff. All that. You know, because when you're in the boxing game, you gotta eat, sleep, breathe only boxing, right? So, you know, I have to take care of a couple of things, and you know, now I'm back and I'm only breathing boxing. So. When you started out, you were, you know, thrown straight into the limelight. You're fighting on all these big cards, Madison Square Garden, all around the country as well. Did that come a little bit too quick for you? Did you feel as well, or you had a time to reflect? You seem like you really understand what's required now in the sport. We know that, obviously, you, you, you know these YouTube guys, they're your fans as well. You, you embroiled yourself into that world a little bit. But the focus right now, you're ready to, to really make a move in this sport. Yeah, it's like when in the beginning, like I was, I feel like I was living in the moment. Like I wasn't really comprehending, understanding that I'm fighting in Madison, that I'm fighting in the O2, that I'm fighting in, you know, Staples Center. And then, yeah, you know, it kind of, it kind of hit me, you know, at one type of thing. And, um, but now, now I have a lot, you know, I feel like I'm maturing. I'm 22 now and, you know, I have a better grasp. But again, like I really feel like I'm a late bloomer and as where I'm at right now, I'm going to be nowhere in two, three years. So. Obviously, as well, you were one of the first fighters that we signed with Matrim and, and Dazone. The first. The, the, the first. first the first. Come on, come on. And, and really, when you look at it, a lot of you guys now, you know, I find it hard to even call you prospects anymore. We're, we're two or three years on. You know, you've, you've been inactive a little bit in the last year, but, you know, Diego, I'll come on to him as well. You guys are like one, two, three fights away from being in some serious tests as well. That's exciting because I want to give you the chance to develop, but I also want to see what you're made of in, in, in the 160-pound particularly division. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you know, you move quick when you, when, when you uh, what a great promoter like yourself, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's like, you know, we're not, I guess you could say we're not prospects anymore, and um, in a couple of fights, you know, 
finish this Saturday, get another fight in December, and then you know it's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting for the next year to come. Well, I'm really pleased to see you back, mate. Look forward to Thank you. White Chocolate putting on a show on Saturday. Probably one of the youngest in our roster, but also someone that's probably the most developed in terms of where they're at in their career and, and looking at championship fights. Diego Pacheco, welcome. You're going to have plenty of support here on Saturday. What a great stage for a big night of boxing. Um, still so young, but you've experienced all those things that Nikita's experienced as well. You boxed in Saudi Arabia. You have boxed, of course, in Mexico. You have boxed all over the States as well. A lot of people start talking about about championships for you in 2022 and a good test, good test for you on Saturday as you continue that progression. Uh, yeah, um, you know, I'm uh, like you said, still very young, but i um, moving pretty fast in the sport and I feel like I'm uh, moving at the right pace. You know, um, every test that's been put in front of me, I've been able to take care of and I just look forward to keep uh, doing the same thing that I've been doing. Obviously, you've been getting that, that quality time in the ring as well, but the sparring you've had as well has been consistent, professional, and impressive as well. Do you think that's been a big part of your develop, development as well? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I've, uh, I'm from L.A., so I'm, I'm really blessed to have be able to work with all the world champions down there with a few names, David Benavidez, uh, Canelo, and a, a lot of other guys who have uh, helped me develop and have taught me a lot of things in the gym. And yeah, I'm really uh, thankful for that, and um, I'm happy with um, how my career has been going so far. Well, you're in a great place. I think Saturday will be another big statement, and then we move on to championships, late part of 2022. Whatever you do, wherever you're tuned into to DAZN all around the world or here in Fresno, do not miss three of the most exceptional young talents in the sport, Diego Pacheco, Nikita Ababi, and Khalil Ko as well, ready to put on a great show here in Fresno on Saturday. Guys, we're going to go back over. We're going to have a head-to-head -head up here, and then we'll bring the other fights up. Thank you. Maybe not a head-to-head. exciting for me, you know, having my debut here. You know, Eddie Hearn's the best promoter in the world and for him to reach out to us and 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 sign us is unbelievable. It's a dream come true. And I'm no longer fighting for the title due to visa issues. The goal remains the same, that's to win and I'm gonna win in a devastate a devastating knockout fashion. And you know I'm I'm out there to prove a point that I deserve the world title and that I deserve to be world champion. Obviously I want to impress but um, I want to go out there and I want to win every round, I want to win every minute. Being a world champion at the same time as my brother would be everything you know for my family, me and my brother, the city of San Antonio. I'm really motiva motivated to get that world title shot and I know it's going to come. For me I think it's just one step at a time. I've got a hard fight on Saturday night against a tough opponent and uh, I'll get to that and then I'll go from there. Well, welcome back and uh, delighted to bring up two great fighters here and two great trainers as well. These two not fighting each other, of course, on Saturday night. But Brock Jarvis, one of the most impressive, most scintillating talents in Australian boxing, makes his matchroom debut for us on Saturday night. Delighted to also be joined by his trainer, Jeff Fennick. And to my right, Jesse Rodriguez, one of the rising stars in the, in the flyweight division. And of course, his trainer, Robert Garcia, as well. Big part of the action on Saturday night. Their opponents getting their medicals done ahead of their fights. Jesse Rodriguez against Burgos and Brock Jarvis against Rodriguez, but not this Rodriguez. Um, Brock, I'm going to start with you, mate. Welcome, and, and thanks for making the trip over from, um, from Australia. Australia is such a big, important market for us um, on the zone now and, and a real bloom area of global boxing. You're right at the forefront of that. You're ready to put on a show at this arena on Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, me and, me and Jeff, we, we work real hard and, you know, very grateful for the opportunity to, to be on such a, an amazing show. Obviously, Mikey Garcia is, you know, one of the all-time greats. So, uh, for me, it's it's a it's an amazing privilege, and um, you know, I've been working real hard, and I'm I'm ready to um, to go to work. Obviously, it's a, a big platform and occasion for you on Saturday, but you've also been putting the hard work and the time in in the gyms here. Uh, in the US. I know you've sparred with a lot of these guys previously. I think Montana Love and obviously Devin Haney before and been putting in the work with Keith Hunter and those guys as well. A big part of your preparation has been the quality sparring you've been getting in the US. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've been training at um, a lot of Bones Adams gym in Vegas and um, 
we've been working with the guys there, great great group of guys, and they've been helping me out. And uh, you know, I'm very very thankful for that, and it's got me ready. Undefeated, and I know very aggressive in terms of your development as well, um, and not a million miles away from from challenging for a title as well. But these kind of experiences pivotal to your development as well. And and for me, trying to give you these opportunities, these experiences, grow your profile before you're a hundred percent ready to go and challenge for the world title. Yeah, one step at a time for me. I think um, you know I got a tough fight on a Saturday night, and uh, I prepared for a hard ten rounds, and that's what I'm expecting. So um, we're ready for that. Well, former world champion, the legend Jeff Fennick as well. Welcome, Jeff. There's not many bigger fans of Brock Jarvis. We know there's millions of them around the world, particularly uh, women as well. This guy is, is the Australian hunk of boxing, of course, and maybe you were once in your day, Jeff, as well. But right now, a trainer and a great trainer. But I know you, obviously very close to Brock, but a massive fan of this young man. Yeah, I grew up... Um uh, in a bit of trouble when I was young and then Brock's uncle who's a, an amazing uh, rugby league football player but also as a policeman um, was um, a big part in taking me off the streets and putting me into the youth boys club and, uh, and helping me and um, you know seven or eight years ago I get a knock on the door from um, Brock's father and um, he asked me would I be interested in helping and training Young Brock, and um, immediately um, I said yes. I took him out of the back. We'd done some training, and um, the rest is history. It's 19 fights, 19 wins, 17 knockouts, and um, I think that America and the people of the zone are going to see something very, very special. They're going to see somebody who throws, you know, well up to 100 punches every round, and uh, he's you know, very, very committed, and we look, we're very, very blessed and honoured to be sitting here with you guys, especially with the Garcia family, um, who I respect uh, totally, and um, I'm looking forward to this uh, fight night on Saturday night. Although boxing is, is booming in Australia right now, you know, you spent a lot of your time as well fighting internationally. Do you see the importance of that for a young fighter's development as well? Of course, the plan for us is to have big stadium fights with Brock Jarvis in Australia as well. But the key to those appearances globally and getting the, the rounds of sparring in, in the US as well and, and on stages like this, so important for his development. Yeah, it is. Eddie. There's a lot of times we'll get an Aussie guy who'll just go overseas um, for that one-off trip and all of a sudden they get shocked. They get, you know, stage fright and uh, people think, wow, could he really fight? Well, this guy's travelled the world. We've been to Japan sparring, we've been to Mexico, we've been to America, we've been to Bangkok. And uh, so this kid's really, really ready. And um, we thank all the people back at home that have supported us uh, throughout his you know, brief career that have supported us to, to make sure we've had been in this position. And now we've got, you know, the best... In the business, we've got our, with you guys, with Matchroom, and um, we can't ask for any more than that. And now we just, it's all in our court. We've just got to prove to everybody that we can fight. Oh, thank you, Jeff, and, and thank you, Brock. We look forward to a great fight on Saturday night. Robert and Jesse. Robert, as much as uh, Jeff's big fan of, of Brock Jarvis, you as well, huge fan of Jesse Rodriguez. And Mikey as well. I've got to say, Mikey plagues me all the time about Jesse Rodriguez. This young man is a great talent. Uh, it's Burgos for him on Saturday night and then looking for a shot at the World Championship as well. But an outstanding fighter in Jesse Rodriguez. Definitely. Uh Eddie, uh, first of all, thanks for giving us the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I know that uh, Jesse, in the next few fights, he'll be among the best pound for pound fighters in the world because he's that talented, you know. Uh, you know, we all know it. We all see it in the gym. You know, we, we just need that opportunity. And uh, and I'm glad you guys are giving it to us. Uh, I know we're, we're going we're gonna to do something together very, very good and uh, build this kid to be pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world because I know – I. I know my boxing, and uh, everybody in my gym knows the same. You know, my gym is full of talent. You guys know my, my, my stable, but he's one of, the, one of the most talented fighters in my gym. Well, I must know that because every time I put a fight to you, and you've never turned one down, whether it's Kayaguchi, whether it's Soto, whether it's Bermudez, whether it's Burgos, you're just ready to, to let him fly now. We need that opportunity. You know, I, I know there's also a title fight at the same weight division uh, Saturday night. We would love to get the winner. You know, you know, he's ready for any any of the champions at 108. And eventually, we're, we're, we're also going to look into 112, uh, 150, you know, move up three, four divisions because I know, I know this kid's going to be that type of fighter that wins titles in four or five different divisions. Well, Jesse, uh, welcome, and, and uh, translator as well to help if needed. But uh, great words from Robert Garcia. You really are renowned as, as a top, top fighter in that gym, which in itself is a great achievement, yeah. but a big moment for you on Saturday. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, like Robert said, first off, thank you for the opportunity. I'm happy to be here in Fresno, a beautiful stadium. Uh, I, get a, I get to show my talent on the zone come Saturday night, and you know I'm more than ready for whatever Burgos has to bring.
you share that confidence as well that, that Robert has with you, Kai Gucci, Soto, Bermudez. You're ready for all comers. Just need that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, I've been ready since I was 19, 20. I was, I was waiting for the opportunity. And, you know, one came for this fight, but it fell through. And I believe everything happens for a reason. I'm going to keep working, keep getting my wins up. And, you know, the title shot will come. And finally, a word for your uh, Mexican fans, of which there are many as well. Just want to say a few words to them as well. Uh, tune in Saturday night. I'm going to show you a explosive performance, uh, your original Bam, Rodri Bam Rodriguez performance, and don't miss it. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Brock. Thank you, Jeff. We look forward to seeing these two great young fighters shine in important fights in their career on Saturday night. Welcome back, and uh, I never thought the opportunity would come for Mark Castro this early in his career to fight in Fresno, but it was always a very important step in his journey to start fighting here, to fill in stadiums here, and what an opportunity for him on Saturday night. I'm already roasting up up here. This man is so cool, he's got a jacket on as well. It's, it's coming up to 26, 27 degrees, Mark. Welcome. What an opportunity for you. We've seen people around you all week. You know, a lot of media activity as well. Fans going crazy, expecting around 7,000 here on Saturday. What a moment for you to make your Fresno debut on this card in the professional ranks. Uh, thank you, Eddie. Um, I'm really grateful and um, excited for the opportunity. I'm just ready to put on a show in front of the fans this Saturday night. It's quite strange for you to not be fighting on a Canelo Alvarez bill because that's been a common theme so far. But this is almost more important to you, isn't it? We know that it's important to build you as a star in your hometown, home city. And to get to do this at this stage in your career, you're going to get an unbelievable reception on Saturday night. Yes, I'm just uh, excited to see the fans' reactions and the fans um, coming out in support. I know the support is real here in Fresno. And... Everybody knows me growing up, knows my family, and they just know that a lot of hard work and sacrifice went into this. Obviously, Saturday night, and then maybe even get a run out before the end of the year as well, but we know you want to move quickly in the pro game. You're one of the top U.S. amateurs uh, in coming through the system as well. You've kind of gone through a, a small part of that development stage so far, but 2022 is a big year. I know you're not looking past Luna on Saturday night, but, but this is important times here to finish off 2021 but so many big opportunities to arise in 2022 as well well the main thing I stay in the gym I stay focused I stay um, working hard every single day trying to become the best version of myself and I feel like 2022 I'm gonna keep getting better and better Thank you, Mark. Angel Luna, welcome. I mean, this guy looks cool, but I've got to say, Angel, that's a cheeky bow tie you've got on there as well. This is his hometown. There's going to be a huge support for him as well, but you're coming to fight on Saturday night for sure. Yeah, I'm ready for the fight. Thank you for the fight. I'm ready for the fight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the support. I'm ready for the fight. Y vamos a hacer una buena pelea. Este sábado continuo delante y estamos ready para la guerra. We're going to make sure that we give a great fight this Saturday, and I'm very ready for this. I'm taking this very seriously for this fight on Saturday. Thank you, Angel. And finally, for you, Mark, as well, expecting a great fight. This young man had plenty, plenty, plenty more experience than you in the pro game. This is a really solid step up for you. Yes, I feel like um, my team, my manager, and you as well are doing a great job, and I'm just doing my job too. I'm staying in the gym, and I believe the best version of myself can be beat. Thank you, Mark Castro. Castro against Luna. Massive opportunity for Mark Castro. The Fresno debut in front of a huge crowd this Saturday night live on The Zone. Gentlemen, we have a head-to-head -head here, please.
Well, welcome back. And uh, the co-main event of a packed card on Saturday night. This is going to be a tremendous fight, a tremendous war for the WBO light flyweight championship of the world, Elwin Soto against Jonathan Gonzalez, the mandatory challenger for Elwin's WBO championship. I've got to say this division right now, of course, on fire when you talk about light fly with Kai Gucci and Jesse Rodriguez and Bermudez. Um, so many opportunities in the division. Of course, these guys have the potential and ability to move up through the gears, through flyweight, super flyweight with Julio Cesar Martinez, with Estrada, with Rung Vesal, with, with Chocolatito. So many great opportunities at this weight class. It's great to see these guys getting the respect they deserve. These is the most entertaining weight classes in the sport right now. Jonathan, I'll start with you. A lot of people talking about this fight. Mandatory challenger as well. You look fresh. You look ready to go to become a world champion on Saturday. Yes, I'm very prepared. It's been over 10 weeks of training camp. <clears throat> I want to thank Matchroom. I want to thank all of y'all coming down here. Um, training camp has been great. I'm going to be in the champion number 62 of Puerto Rico. Obviously, this is Mexico against Puerto Rico. Is uh, we, Every promoter loves that narrative as well, but this is a great champion as well. All action. This should gel into a fantastic fight. It seems that every time you guys meet in the light flyweight division or flyweight or super flyweight, we see all action fights. You expect that seeing this man's style. It's going to be a tremendous fight. The only thing I can say that um, Saturday night is going to be a war. I'm coming to be the next world champion, 100 champion, and look for big fights. Obviously, big unification fights out there for you as well, looking to become a world champion for Puerto Rico. It would mean a huge amount for you as well. All the sacrifices you made in this sport, I guess this is the pivotal moment of your career. You have to make it count. I have to, I have to be world champion now. This, this could be my last opportunity, and that's why I have trained hard for this fight. And July, um, October 16th is going to be a great night, and Puerto Rico is going to have his another, other champion. Thank you, Jonathan, and Elwin, through, through your translator there as well. Uh, Jonathan says Mexico v. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico will have a, a new world champion on Saturday. He expects a war. Do you expect a war as well on Saturday? No, claro, va a ser una, una guerra bastante grande y la verdad que yo solamente voy a salir a hacer mi trabajo. Of course, it's going to be a big war, and what I know is that I'm going to go out there and win. Obviously, there is uh, discussions and, and looking ahead to unification fights as well, but this is your mandatory challenger. This is a very, very tough fight for you on Saturday. Este, hay muchas peleas posibles de unificación, pero este es tu retador obligatorio. ¿Qué piensas al respecto? Eh, pienso que va a ser una, una defensa un poco difícil, pero pues sabemos que va, vamos a hacer un buen trabajo y salir de este compromiso y, y hacer más defensa o si no unificaciones. I think it will be a defense that will be kind of tough and I know we will do very well uh, in passing this commitment and then after that either we will look for unification fights or move up to a, another division. Obviously, last time out was crazy on the Canelo undercard, 73,000 people. Uh, talk to us about that experience as well. And another big experience here in front of 7,000 outdoors. Great times for you on the zone. En tu última pelea, peleaste en el respaldo de Canelo, 73,000 personas. Platícanos sobre esa experiencia y también de tu experiencia aquí en Fresno, donde estarás peleando a través de the zone. Eh, la verdad que fue una experiencia es pelear, pelear ahí en la cartelera de Canelo, eh, nunca me lo esperaba, pero fue un, fue un orgullo pelear ahí y le agradezco a la empresa Mushroom por darme la oportunidad. Y claro, también me siento muy, muy a gusto aquí en, en Fresno, California y daremos una buena pelea. To be able to fight there in the Canelo card, it's something I never expected, and it was a great opportunity. So I'm grateful to Matchroom uh, for the opportunity, and, and oh, here as well. I feel very nice here fighting in Fresno, California, where I know I'm going to give a great fight. Well, thank you, Elwin. And as I said, Mexico against Puerto Rico, the WBO light flyweight championship of the world. This will be a cracking fight here in Fresno, live on the zone. Gentlemen, we have a head to head here, please. <laughs>
Mikey Garcia is a four weight world champion, one of the greatest fighters of the modern era. When Garcia gets in the ring, it's always an event. It is over! European super lightweight champion, Sandor Martin. Sandor Martin. People might not know who he is, but he's a hell of a fighter. He's a good boxer. He is a southpaw. Ask any fighter when they're fighting a southpaw, that's going to present a challenge. A tune-up fight for Garcia or an announcement to the world for Martin. The real deal strikes again! Well, welcome back as we head to the main event on Saturday night. Big moment for both of these men. Of course, Mikey Garcia against Sandor Martin here in Fresno, live on the zone all around the world. The four division champion against the European champion. Sandor, I'll start with you. Special thanks as well to Chris Kirchi of OPI and our partners there in, in Spain and Italy. Um, through your translator as well here. Sandor, this is a massive opportunity for you. And when I looked at opportunities and options for Mikey Garcia, I saw you in every ranking across every single governing body. Of course, headlining our shows in Spain, this seemed like the obvious choice. You said yes very, very quickly. Este, una gran oportunidad para ti, Sandor. Cuando estaba mirando a los posibles rivales de Mikey Garcia, estuviste clasificado en cada uno de los organismos. Este es una gran, gran oportunidad para ti. Y este, cuando se te presentó la oportunidad, dijiste que sí lo querías muy rápidamente. Sí, evidentemente no podías aprovechar esta oportunidad de enfrentar a un gran campeón como Mikey García. Cuando uno entra al deporte del boxeo es para aceptar los grandes retos y es por eso que vine aquí para cumplir mis sueños. He trabajado toda la vida por ello y ahora que tengo la oportunidad no la voy a dejar escapar. It's a great opportunity and I have to take advantage of it. Uh, it's a great champion to be fighting against Mikey García and that's why I got involved in boxing, to accept the great challenges, to uh, achieve my dreams. So I've worked all my life for this opportunity. You've been cruising through the European defenses. You've hardly lost a round to these challenges. Is this what you need now, a chance to prove to everybody that you are a world-class fighter? And this is a massive opportunity for you, for Spanish boxing, for your family. This is exactly what you want in your career. En tus defensas del título europeo ha sido un poco fácil, pero ¿crees que esta oportunidad es lo que necesitas para mostrar al mundo que estás a un nivel mundial? Evidentemente, debutar contra Mikey García en Estados Unidos es una gran presentación, es una gran oportunidad y evidentemente pues creo que sí que es lo que necesito. Necesito una exposición mundial, quiero las grandes peleas, quiero estar en los grandes eventos y quiero enfrentar a los grandes nombres de, del boxeo mundial. Es por eso que, que he venido. Mikey García es uno de los mejores. Yo siempre quise enfrentar a los mejores y aquí estoy. Otros no hubiesen aceptado el reto, yo he venido. It's very important to be making my U.S. debut against Mikey Garcia. It's a great opportunity and a great uh, opportunity to present myself for the first time in the United States. And yes, this is the challenge that I need. I need exposure on the big level so that after, on the world level, so that after I can have the big fights, the big events, fight the big names in boxing. And that's why I came here. Mikey Garcia is one of the best fighters, and I've always wanted to fight the best fighters. And finally, a lot of people look at this fight as a warm-up fight for Mark, Mikey Garcia. I see the look in your eye. I know what this means to you. You're ready to give it everything on Saturday night. Quizás muchos piensan que es simplemente una pelea para que Mikey se mantiene ocupado, pero tú ves que tienes mucha determinación para salir con la victoria, ¿verdad? Faltan 48 horas para que el mundo entero me conozca. Los campeones exist existen para ser derrotados, y es a eso a lo que he venido. 48 hours is how long it will take for me to present myself to the world and for the rest of the world champions to be put on notice. Thank you, Sandor. Mikey, welcome back. Great to see you. Thank you. Been a while, you know, all of a sudden. You were, you were one of the lucky ones who boxed just before the pandemic. So, you, you know, you weren't inactive before then, but it has been a long time. Over 18 months out of the ring now. You're back, ready. It's going to be some occasion here on, in Fresno as well. And a tough test against Sandor Martin. I know a lot of people look at this as your, your comeback fight, if you want, your warm-up fight. But this is a guy who's really coming to win on Saturday. Definitely. Look, uh, we're excited to be back. Excited to get back this Saturday, you know, and show the world that I'm, I'm still here. I keep reminding everybody that I'm, I'm here. I haven't, haven't left. There's still much more, you know, from Mikey Garcia to, to give the, the, the fans. This is just another fight to get back and show them. Um, you know, I, I did take the fight with Jesse. We had plans to have a great, you know, year uh, last year. And because of the pandemic, you know, everybody kind of froze. Everything, everything went silent. But uh, I'm excited to finally get back. 
uh, get in the in, in the groove things and look for much bigger fights. Uh, big, I want to be big again, big title fights, and and those are the fights that excite me the most. So that's why this is another step in that direction. How how easy is it to sometimes overlook the challenge of a Sandor Martin when you talk about those major fights as well? We know this is a big fight for you, big fight for Fresno, but I know that you want those career-defining fights. Now you're fighting someone that has the hunger like you probably had when yeah. you were coming through without championships as well. This guy's coming to change his life on Saturday. Look, I, I've been there. I've been in, in his shoes, in his place where you want that opportunity, where you want to show your fans and, and the whole world you know, what you're made of. So I know what he's thinking. I know what, what he has has in his mind and and the future that he sees uh, if, if he were to beat me on Saturday um, but I ain't gonna let that that happen you know I'm, I'm also on a track to to reach you know greater success greater fights um, I'm not overlooking him you know I got to take things very serious because I know I'm gonna have the best version of Sandra Martin on Saturday night you know this is gonna be probably bigger fight for him than if he was fighting in Europe you know for a vacant title you know, a vacant world title that doesn't highlight enough, doesn't probably do enough for him as this fight does. This is at the highest level, the highest stage of his career. So I, I can expect the very, very best Sandra Martin on Saturday night. But that's what I want. I want the very best so that I can get the very best out of me also. If I had an opponent that I knew he was going to take a knee, it doesn't motivate me. That doesn't do it for me. That doesn't excite me. I need someone that can really push me and test me in order for me to bring out the very best. You are a big favourite to win this fight, and I know winning is always the bottom line, but do you feel like you have to win in style to make a statement? Is that the intention on Saturday night to go out and put a performance on the zone that people turn around and say, wow, Mikey Garcia is a player, he's there, he's ready to fight the best, and you have to look good winning, I feel. Yes, I, I do feel that I have to you know, perform you know, and, and win you know, spectacular, but... I also I keep people I keep hearing people asking if I just if I want if I need a knockout. I don't need a knockout to look great. I don't need a knockout to to show everybody who I am as a fighter and that I still have everything and that I haven't lost a step. I just got to do well, perform well, do my job, get the win in a way that people can re recognize my talent is still here. And that's what I plan on doing. And finally, a word on, on Fresno as well. Rick and those guys done a great job here. You've been out, you know, promoting yourself and the fight on Saturday in, in this great place. And uh, going to be a great crowd here as well. Looking forward to fighting in Fresno on yeah. Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all the love and support from all the fans up here in Fresno and Central Valley. I, uh, I'm here and, and I, I'm glad to be here. Uh, big thanks to Rick, who was big, big help, you know, big support, organizing, helping with the event. Uh, we'll be working again, you know, together because it's, it's been wonderful. Again, the zone and matchroom, everybody's been on board really, really well, working very well with me. Um, I, can't, I can't say anything else other than thank you to everybody. Well, thank you, Mikey. Four division world champion against the number one star in Spanish boxing right now, Sandor Martin. We expect a great fight here in Fresno, live on the zone, wherever you are. Do not miss it, gentlemen. We have a head to head up here, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. It's now time for the feature bell of the evening. From the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! This is something that comes along every now and then in generation, and it's special, and it's no hype. I'm telling you, it's special. No respect for this guy. Here go. Now he's got that fire in his eyes. You better believe it now. That was something special. Canelo gets the man. 20 rounds, 14 victories. It is a A professional record, a perfect one. Remember, got to the body. Great finish. 
from a great finishing. It was Lamb versus Lamb. And still, the undisputed champion of the world.